take the longest section of aluminum extrusion and add the profile corner brackets on the side with the ticks printed on the frame. Make sure you place the thinner side of the brackets in the extrusion so it can move freely in the track and not stop at the edge. On all aluminum extrusion, the numbers will be on the outside and the tick marks will be on the inside. On this first piece, you want to make sure that zero is on the right and 40 centimeters, or in my case 16 inches, is on the left. Do the same thing to the other side. Now take two smaller sections of the aluminum extrusion and add them to the other side of the profile corner brackets. Again, make sure that the ruler tick marks are facing towards the center and the numbers are on the outside. Take an M5 by 25 screw and enter it in the threaded hole in the extrusion to join the two parts together. Do that same thing to the other side and then tighten the grub screws on the profile corner brackets with the included Allen wrench. Now take two of the M5 profile nuts and slide them into the outside section of the aluminum extrusion on the slot facing out, just under the printed numbers. Place two on one side and then two on the other. With the installed profile nuts, you can now add the other long side of the frame. Insert the profile corner brackets in the larger section of the extrusion on the side under the tick marks. Then enter those in the two smaller extrusion sections to complete the frame. Use two M5 by 25 screws to attach the extrusion and then tighten the grub screws on the profile corner brackets as well. Now turn the frame so that the shorter aluminum section is facing forward. You should see the profile nuts in the frame. You should also have zero printed on the bottom left corner on both sections of the extrusion. Take the x-axis gantry and enter it into the aluminum extrusion. The plate that holds the laser should be facing forward with the wheels on the back. Now turn the machine around and install two frame legs on the back of the machine. First take the timing belt and enter it into the slot above the corner hole with the teeth facing down. Then loosely attach the M5 by 8 screw to one of the profile nuts you inserted in the frame earlier. Then use the washer with another M5 by 8 screw and screw it into the threaded hole on the aluminum extrusion. Then finish tightening the screw that attached the profile nut. Do the same thing on the other side of the back of the machine, following the same steps. Now thread the timing belt under the wheel, over the sprocket, and then under the wheel on the other side. Remember that the teeth on this timing belt should be facing down. Do this on both sides of the gantry. Now install the front right corner leg of the machine. This installs the same as the back legs. When installing the screw with the washer into the aluminum extrusion threaded hole, pull the timing belt so that the tension of the belt is just enough to keep the belt from sagging, but not overly tight as well. Too tight or too loose will cause engraving and cutting artifacts. Now place two profile nuts in the top slot of the front left corner of the machine. Pull the timing belt through the hole next to the Y limit switch and use two M5 by 8 screws to attach it to the frame. Make sure the front of the switch lines up with zero on the Y axis. Apply tension to the belt and insert the screw. Again, be careful not to over or under tighten the belt. Now install the motherboard onto the front left corner with two M5 by 8 bolts. One through the profile nut you inserted earlier and another through the threaded hole on the frame. Under the machine, install the bracket that holds the front of the drag chain. Use a M5 by 8 screw with a washer. 
Then loosely add one of the M5T nuts onto the screw and install it into the underside of the aluminum extrusion. This T-nut should turn itself in the extrusion to lock it in place as you tighten it. Take the other smaller drag chain bracket and install it in the plate next to the motor for the Y-axis. There are two threaded holes in that plate. Use two M3 by 6 screws to attach the bracket. Now install the front of the drag chain using two M3 by 6 screws on the plate you added to the front left corner. Then curve the back of the drag chain over and install it into the bracket next to the motor with two M3 by 6 screws. Now it's time to install the laser module. Slide the module on the front of the x-axis bracket and secure with some screws. Using an Allen wrench, slightly unscrew the bolt in the front top left corner of the laser module next to the wire connection terminal. Install the laser cable loom terminal to the connection and the ground wire under the bolt you just loosened. Be sure not to over tighten the bolt as it may break the acrylic plate. Now install the longer terminal to the Y axis motor. Then connect two wires that are labeled with X for the X axis motor. Then connect the wire labeled with an L to the laser cable loom. For the limit switch, pay close attention to the orientation that the switch is installed. The red wire should be on the same end as the red button on the front of the switch. So on this model, the red button is on the right, so the red wire goes on the right. The black wire should be installed in the middle terminal. The ground wire should be installed just below the switch with an M5 by 8 screw with a nut on the back. On the other end of the gantry, plug the X-axis wire into the stepper motor. Now install the terminal into the motherboard. Then install the wires into the Y limit switch. Again, the red wire needs to be installed on the same side as the red button on the front of the switch. The black goes in the middle. Now, install zip ties to the drag chain. Also attach the laser wire next to the Y-axis motor and on top of the laser module, making sure the wire is pointing up. Also add a zip tie to the wire next to the X-axis motor. Using two M5 by 8 screws with two M5 T-nuts, install the 3D printed focal height holder in the front next to the motherboard. Plug the 24 volt power adapter into the front of the machine. You might see a spark when attaching this to the machine. This is normal and no cause for alarm. Turn the red emergency stop button clockwise to disengage it if it was pressed down. Push the power button for 5 seconds and the machine should home itself to the 0, zero position. If everything is hooked up correctly, the laser will stop at the home position. Your machine is now ready to use.